Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Yes, that's right, I am in creative today. Uh, I decided to go creative with it, today's build, because it's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit more blocky, I'll call it. It's going to probably have a high part count, I don't know how well it's going to work, but uh, uh, there's a few re other reasons too. Uh, one, it's taking some of these builds I'm building, there's, I'm spending half the time finishing up the plating and the mechanical stuff with the tool. And it takes a lot of time, and there's some bigger builds that I want to start working on, but trying to do them in a, in a survival world, as rewarding as it is, it can be a little tedious, especially when you're going to start harvesting biomass all the time. And that was just a thing, and I, well, I had to get around to build another thing for transporting resources, which we will do eventually. But there's other fun little things I want to do, like today's build. Uh, something I had done a while ago was I started attempting sort of like a labyrinth and this is actually what today's build is. I'm going to be building a giant tabletop labyrinth and it's something I wanted to do in the game for a while but there was limitations to what we had when that originally came out but now we have uh, active block locking so uh, rotating plates and hinges they don't move until you unlock them so that's actually good. Uh, we have the switch boards now which is really good because I like getting the whole you know, in the real world aspect, just pushing buttons instead of being in a cockpit going left, right, up, down, what have you. Um, yeah, there was, uh, sorry about that. The heat has fried my brain. I forgot what I was talking about two seconds after I said it. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I, I had actually done something like this using hover pads before. It was actually sort of featured in one of the earlier Steam videos, and it was a marble maze, and it was basically a labyrinth, but I was using hover pads to push a ball around, and it did work okay. I was thinking about redesigning it, use the air blades, but the air blades, they don't really have the, uh, the proper push that the hover pads do when you're using the directional, so I didn't really go with that idea. But uh, I've always wanted to do something like this tabletop idea. And now that we've got one, we have the hover pads. Two, we have the switchboards. Three, we have the uh, joint locking. And four, I'm in a creative world, so I can do this a lot quicker. Uh, so when I build stuff like this, I always got to think about, you know, what's going to be above, what's going to be seen, and what's not going to be seen. It's like you Minecrafters out there, you know what I'm talking about. You want to build something that uses redstone, you have to plan around your redstone, sort of. Now, I, I know I'm going to need a return system, and I know how big the return system is going to be in relation to the size of the table. So uh, my return system is going to be about 16 blocks down, probably 20 with the, the elevator going back up to the chute to the top, and then I'm going to need at least another 6 or 8 to get up to the top. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to start all my motors and all that stuff right at this hill here. So even though the joints do lock, there is still a lot of sag when you put a lot of weight on them. So as I start building them, I'm going to uh, like I'll, I'm gonna first build the, the main actual play area, which is going to be like a maze, the holes and all that stuff. And it's going to be an ending spot. I'm going to try to get a try to get like a pressure plate with like a reset switch so when the ball drops down in the, the end hole maybe four beacons come up in the corner and maybe even try to get like a distributor going if I really feel motivated enough to get like different color lights going on and stuff like that uh, but yeah so I gotta to get that all worked in so, but let's go ahead and start by getting some blocks in the bar because as you can see I am a building virgin at the moment uh, it's all going to be ceiling tile based because it's going to be four by fours. Uh, the paths themselves are actually going to be three blocks wide. Uh, with uh, I'm thinking about I was originally going to go with try to make like a wood theme, but I think I might actually go with like a, a Planet Nomads actual sort of like sci-fi theme. Use the railings for the walls and and what have you. All right, so we're going to use that. We're going to need ceiling tiles. I'm uh, just going to start by a six probably gonna go 16 by 16 and then we'll cut it out from there I will have to put a set and put it into an odd number just because I'm, I'm using the rotating plates and so I gotta have it somewhat balanced and that's where the center of mass is gonna come in handy too because we'll be able to actually find out where it's gonna be uh, 
I normally I try to build from the outside and work my way in, but since I already know how big my inside is going to be, I'm going to start from the inside and work my way out. Uh, and yes, I am in that uh, special secret unit, uh, dev build of Unity doing this uh, just for the sake of it because I'm having such good luck with it right now. Uh, sadly, that pirate ship did not work out too well. Uh, but yeah, I plan on doing some testing with this. Uh, hopefully the developers keep working on it, try to get some better progress. So that is 14 there. I don't mind doing a little bit of digging, but not too much. At the same time too, I don't want to be having to replant too far down. Uh, hmm. You know what? Let's do it here. All right, so what I need to do is start an area where the the spinners are going to be. Uh, it's going to be driven by, well, if you've seen the tabletop arcade, uh, the tabletop labyrinths, they have two knobs on either side. One knob rotates it uh, top left and right. The other one rotates it forwards and backwards. So it's basically like almost like a three-axis sort of thing. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having four separate motors, I'll call it, where it's going to be four hover pad spinners that are controlled by switchboards. Uh, one side is going to be going this way, the other side is going to be going the other way, that side is going to be going this way, this side is going to be going that way. And so that way we can get f four complete controls. And because I'm doing it with the four hover pads, I actually need a 9x9 nine nine area. So it's one, let's see, one, two, three, four four, five, and what happens is the rotating plate goes on the other side, um, wherever it may be, actually no, the rotating plate goes on afterwards, but I'll just quickly set this up, actually you know what, I think we could do it that way too, let's check this quickly here, and then I'll start building and I'll quit rambling, but yeah, so basically we need No, we do have to put the block here. That's not the block. One, two. And then here, we're going to put four blocks on either side. One block on either side. Four blocks in total, like a, like a plus sign. And then we're going to put some hover pads, which I didn't put on the bar, of course. Me forgetting hover pads. What is the world coming to? All right, and... Yes, that's all we do. We put it like that. I just, got, I just have to make sure that when I put them on the other side, and that they're facing the right way. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot I'm in creative. Yay! That's half my time saved right there. It's just having to dismantle misplaced blocks. And it switched on me again. Oh, I was in the way. There we go. And then down one more. So then I have four of them driving it, because this is going to be a, probably a pretty heavy table. And since we're running a ball through a maze, we got to be able to be fast with it. Now I know, I'm not, now I know it's not going to do much now, because it's still anchored to the ground. But then from here, we put another block on. Like there. And then we put the rotating plate. Actually, no. We don't need that block there. We can put the rotating plate on it. And then here I start building my uh, my next frame that connects to, we'll call it the y-axis. This will be the x-axis, that'll be the y-axis. But anyways, so now from here, I basically start building a big line. And now, ideally I should have it actually rotating on the table surface here. So that's probably what I'll do. So I'm going to pick a color for this. Uh, I always go with that green. I was thinking about originally about doing this color with uh, the darker brown for for the trim. Try to get like the actual wooden style and then have the ball out of the gray to make it look like the stainless steel. And I might actually do that just for, just for color's sake. But then I, mean, I want to use the fences too instead. See how the fence looks in brown. 
I think we can work with that. Uh, yes, it's going to take some while to get back into creative. All right, so I'm going to get something set up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so here's our playing field. Uh, it's, like I said, it's going to be, uh, I'll call it 16 by 16 uh, ceiling tile squares. And now we're going to get a nice decorative brown trim around. Uh, the hover pads might be exposed a little bit. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, probably going to go with some curved blocks in here as soon as I get them on the hot bar here. Uh, right here. And uh, yes, that's, that's what I want. So yeah, it's going to be go like this. I'm thinking it'll probably only stay too high. But then what I'll do is I'll just get uh, curved corners in uh, as soon as I get the right block there. There we go. Like so. And then I'll work something in the corners here like that so it's all rounded and I'll go and do that around the rest of the table and I'll bring you back and there's the, the outside trim so I'm thinking for the main ball return all that stuff maybe I'll have the ball entering on this side so this will be where it starts in the corner now because I have this quadrant off uh, I do want to try to keep this somewhat balanced uh, I can always go here and find out exactly where that center mass is. Now it's a little more on this side because I do have it planted over there and that's that's why. And plus I got hover, plate, hover pads over there but not on that side. So I'm going to be sort of using that as an idea. Um, I have been thinking of a different sort of control setup. I'm sorry, I'm moving my mouse here. But what I got to do now is now we got to create some drop zones, some holes in the floor. And I'm just going to place them randomly. I'm going to do a quick save here. Okay. Yeah, before you start taking things out of your builds, you always want to save first. So I'm wondering how many different drop areas we wa I want. Originally, I was thinking maybe four or five. I do have to have one opening for the finale. So let's try four random ones there. It's two, three, and... Go a four. All right, and do the same over here. One, two, three, and we'll put one right in the corner here. On this side, one there, one there, one there, and and one. Sure, that works. All right, and you know what? Maybe. Well, if we're going to be starting there, no, we're starting here, actually. Is that where we're starting? Yes, we're starting over here. Then I better put that back. Uh, that's not the color. No, we want this color. All right, and I'll go back to my little small block so I can actually see what I'm doing here. And then we'll take, hmm. Sure. And just pick one and pull it out. Now, since we're going to come out of this end, we might as well have a little trap there. Uh, let's see, that one's there. Let's do one there, one there, and sure, one over there. All right, so there is our holy table. Yes, our holy table. Um, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make this the final spot. All right, and then we'll get this back out, fill in that hole. If only filling holes in the terrain was that easy. So then, if I go back to build vision, I should be in the same spot, and that's all I cared about. All right, so now we got to get some railings in. So the railings, oh, there's that floating center of mass again. There you are. Where are you? Right there. Ha <laughs> ha. I can see it. I got eyes in the back of my head. But yeah, so now I gotta just basically set up the layout uh, an area. It's gonna be three blocks wide using railings. And then just make some, uh, adjust the holes as we go along. So that's gonna be three right there. So that's gonna be where the first railing comes out. And that's where the ball comes out. And so on and so forth. I might actually leave a gap there. Uh, 
Sure, we'll leave a little cheaty way to get through, I guess. Why not do that? And so on and so forth. So let me get a bit of a layout here, and then I'll bring you back once time to do a little more detailing. So there's the table layout. So as you can see, I've got the fences, and I rounded out the holes a little bit. There are a few areas you could take some shortcuts, maybe. I honestly don't know how well it's going to even be going to be how well it's going to move. I'm sorry, it's first thing in the morning for me. And a sleepless night because of the heat and terrible neck pains for some reason while I was trying to sleep. So it was absolutely terrible. But anyways, yeah, you start here. Uh, I got a blue for the start and then you can sort of see the green around the, the drop hole for the finish. You start here, you go through here uh, and go around. You can, you should be able to cut through areas like this. Again, I don't know how well this is actually going to work since I'm only using four four hover pads to move something that weighs currently, I think it was 160 tons. Let's get that old build vision up and see what we have here. Uh, I also want to check my uh, my centering because I did fill in the holes a little bit, added a few blocks on the outside edge. And as you can see, it's still a little heavy on this side. But we're currently 173 tons. Yeah. It's pretty heavy for a toy. So I might have to put a few blocks on. Uh, something I was thinking about too, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous clip, uh, was I was thinking about having, since I'm going to be having each each one of these motors, so I'll call it individually controlled, I'm thinking of maybe having it leaving, leaving them all on. So at least I have force going this way, force going the other way, and it sort of holds it in place since I have just like that sit by gravity. Because if I were to, uh, unlock that hinge now it's gonna start rolling that way and actually you know what that's actually a fun thing to try right now where do I have it planted no it is not because I have it planted there not there but anyways uh, I'm what I'm gonna do is uh, but yeah uh, as far as the route goes it's only one way you can go unless you can take a few shortcuts uh, like you might be able to sneak through here somewhere or even through here, if this thing could be controlled well enough. But it's it's challenging, but it's doable. And it might be something interesting for the workshop if it actually works. But anyways, uh, now to get onto the, the hover pads. So I have these ones uh, going this way. So the other ones, I have to have the bottom side. And this is actually something that's a bit of a discussion going on in the forums right now is uh, the placement of the hover pads talking about uh, trying to get better chevrons on them. Uh, the slope side, uh, you, you can actually tell which is the slope side. It's actually supposed to be facing down. It's a little hard to see in the, the ghost version of it. Uh, green's not too bad. You can sort of see the difference, right? You can actually see that white dot there. But if you change the color to something like white, it is a little tricky to see. Uh, that's actually something else I noticed too. The ring, the outside ring, is actually complete on this side, but it's not on this side. So that's something else you can you look forward to. They're talk they were talking about having uh, build vision on while you're doing it, and actually showing the arrow pointing in the direction of facing down, which I have no problems with. That actually come in handy. Uh, I know there is an issue with uh, blocks rotating on their own. But anyways, let's go and uh, try to get this thing finished. And I'm enjoying these frame rates. One thing I didn't know, I don't know how long it's been going on for. Probably every time I've been using this version of the build. But my my refresh was up down to 50 frames. I had a 50 hertz refresh instead of 60. So even though I was recording at 50 frames, or 60 frames, I was only getting 50 frames of video. But as you can see, these ones are going to be facing the other way. So this one, this side's going to go this way. The other side's going to go the other way. I'm hoping that the the framework is going to stop things from going too far, acting like a stop, because these are actually going to be pretty large structures as it is. All right. So now we'll go ahead and put the rotating plate on. That's not a rotating plate. That's a rotating plate. Put a block on it. So what I need to do is I need to capture this side. So I'm going to start working on the other side because it's already planted. Actually, it's not planted. i got to plant that first. 
Uh, one of the things, I, another thing I was trying to think about too is how I was going to plant everything because I don't want to be putting too much weight on these active blocks because because they will flex. At least here I can plant, get two posts down to the ground and plant it. But I was thinking about like over here on this side, I got to go all the way down to that spot there, which isn't that big of an issue. But if it starts flex pulling it too much over the span of 40 or 50 meters, a millimeter over here could be one meter over there. And that's something that is going to be a bit of a challenge. But anyways, let's go ahead and start by building our back plate. So it's going to be, it's going to have to be a 7x7 seven seven because we need a, or 9x9, nine nine, we need a 5x5 five five on the inside for the hover pads. And then that's going to be the bottom. Okay, let's get the right blocks, or the blocks in the right place. And I have suggested about making that reticle or crosshair or whatever you will call it have some sort of outline or shadow or sometimes so you can see it especially when you're removing blocks and I'm probably just gonna leave the outside of this white just for the sake of it so now we need to get our, our, our planting stick uh, our, our safety beam I call it a safety beam because it stops things from going haywire now I want to just plant this to the ground so then I, that way I can put as much weight on this thing as I want and that rotating plate will not move because it's anchored to the ground it's when I remove it that things are becoming a problem so now I'm gonna go ahead and get this side finished up build the frame around the other side to and uh, yeah I'll bring you back when it's time to start closing off the other end there Okay, I have it around to the other side. As you can see, I just left a uh, one block gap and that should leave enough room for this to move it, it around. Uh, it might even come out. I'll definitely be doing some saves and putting some stops in. But now I'm at this point here and this is where uh, using the center of mass indicator can come to your advantage because we are currently dealing with multi-block structure or multi-structure structures or multi-grid structures, however you want to look at it. And so we'll go ahead and turn build vision on. So we have the main one here. This one has its own center of mass, which is going to be probably closer to that side somewhere because that is also planted to the ground. And then we have this center of mass. Now what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to stick that out a little bit so you can see that it's 61, 61 kilos or pounds or whatever they're using here. I think it's kilos. So what I want to do is I need three blocks there for the hover pads and then a block there and I'm going to go around to both sides now seeing as how this side and that side is both the same grid this should connect to each other uh, what concerns me is I don't want anything touching this I want this to be completely isolated from this so I gotta make sure that nothing snaps onto it so I'm gonna go in like this and as long as that center mass does not change then I'm good so I'm going to go around here, okay, and place a block on top, and then like so, and so far we are good. See when it goes red like that, it's letting you know that something's not right. If I place it here, it would connect to that, but it should connect there, and then it should connect there. So then that means that that center block is completely isolated from everything else. And then what I will do just for, uh, I was actually going to cap this off, but I got another, another rail that's got to go around here. So I think I'll just cut that off and pray to God that that stays in because that's what happened with the pirate ship. So then all that's done, I'm going to actually build the housing around it just like I did the other side. And then I'll bring you back when I'm going to work on the other axis. Alright, I have this side done. I actually decided to go with the slopes around it, make it a little less blocky. May as well, since I don't put enough detail into my builds, but uh, I do have a special build coming up uh, the next week or so if if uh, my special live stream I'm planning happens to go through. Uh, again, I will let you know the details on that, but it, it's definitely going to be one to watch out for if it happens. All right, so now we got to get to this side done. And I was thinking about this isn't going to be too bad. This is only going to be the the only moving part here other than the table because this one is actually going to be anchored right to the ground. Or the, call it stator housing. 
if you want to look at these electric motors, the hover pads are the stator, the wire coil that's on the inside, and the box around it is the stator housing where the magnets are. If you know how uh, stuff like that works. Alright, so then the same thing here. Um, where did I go on this? I guess I'll leave the, the extra block space. Actually, I will need to have the extra block space. What am I talking about? All right, so the hover pad is actually placed on this block. So the hover pad takes up this block, this block, this block, leaving one block gap there. And then we put the rotating plate on this one. Like so. One, two, uh, three, and... Uh, four, and I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, the stator is... Where was the stator again? It was on this side. Should be. Have a little peek in there. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So I am doing this right. And you'd think I'd be able to have this all worked out and ready to go by the time I start recording. No. I usually just wait you make it up as I go, figure it out, it'll work one way or another. But anyway, so this one is going to be pretty simple. This one's just going straight down to the ground. Um, I probably will use ceiling tiles just to hide everything. Um, but it will have to be uniform, so let's actually get some variation in this. Let's do the posts. Uh, what color should we do the box? Hmm. Realize it could be nice, to, probably be best to go with the brown, or we can go with a black box around it, or we can go with my favorite color in the game, this gray, which you can call titanium or military gray or something. To me, it reminds me of hard anodizing, which is something I something I actually do, and it's a really nice color. But uh, the thing about what I do is it's not actually uh, to put blocks under there. It's not actually um, a color, it's the natural color that forms from the anodizing process, which is just, no. yeah, that'll be fine, we'll have the outside of this uh, gray. But uh, basically we're just changing the surface of aluminum from aluminum, from aluminum to aluminum oxide. All right, so the hover pads on this one need to go uh, six. I'll keep these white just because. Now, the same thing, it doesn't matter which way I start with. As long as these ones are going this way and the other ones are going the other way. So it's going to be the same thing, rinse and, uh, rinse and repeat. So I got to get these hover pads on both sides. I'm going to build a cabinet around here with the stator housings around these. And I'll bring you back when we're time to work on the return system. That's the right way. And I was just thinking about this one. Since uh, these stator housings aren't actually going to be moved at all, they're going to be planted to the ground, I don't have to worry about actually capturing this side. I can just plant this right to the ground. I was worried about it being a little long and worried about things getting off kilter, but I think we should be okay to just do it this way. And now we can just build the box around it, make it fit. Oh, that did drop. Okay. <laughs> Thought I got stuck in a corner somewhere. Yeah, I thought I'd just point that out before I carry on. And if I can touch it, yes it does. Alright, this is what I have so far. Uh, it took me a little while to do the outside of this. Uh, I'm actually glad I'm doing this in creative because it would take so long to do in survival. Uh, I am a little worried about maybe this not having enough room to move, but uh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will move just enough. Uh, originally, I was actually thinking about doing a bit of a test run on this, but I think we should be okay. Everything works out perfect. When do I have problem building things? But now we got to get the ball return set up. And this basically is just going to be a setup so when the ball drops down any of these holes, except for that one over there, that it gets fed back into an elevator that goes back up and starts the process all over again. Uh, this is going to be a little bit bigger than I anticipated. I probably should have gone a little bit higher. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ramps. I'm going to basically do the same setup that I had with the, the so-called bowling game. And I'm just going to make all this white just for the sake of it. So I do have to 
stay away from here. I don't have any holes on this side, do I? No, just that one. So I will start it here. I don't want to be too high up, but I don't want to be too far down. I have had issues with the balls actually rolling once they touch a, hit a surface. So maybe enough of a drop, let's say six blocks or so would be enough to get it to roll. There's nothing really in this corner except for that hole here and that one. Uh, the only thing is, is I'm going to be going down one block at a time. So this one's going to be here. Then the next one's going to be here. And then the next one's going to be not there, but there. And then they're going to stretch all the way across to the other end until I figure, or until I have roughly a two, three block space. I could probably even go down to two if I really want. That's just for the, the, the hover pad shoot that I get. I will have to dig some out. I do have this thing grounded in many areas. The only thing I cannot touch is that post right there. Well, I probably could. Since it's all planted and ready to go, it doesn't matter if this actually goes anywhere. But anyways, uh, let me work this out and I'll bring you back when I got something to show for it. Okay, there is the ramp. So, uh, it was just now. After about 10 minutes after finally finishing this, I had to take a bit of a break because it was getting a little tedious. Uh, I kind of underestimate some of these projects sometimes. I know what's involved and what needs to be done, but once I start getting to them, it's like, whoa, okay, well, I gotta do that, and I gotta do this, and get to this point. And I'm thinking, well, I'm almost done, and I wait, I'm not, because I still have to do the, the return. And then I had one of those moments where I realized I did this backwards. If that's a starting position over there, I could have saved myself some time, made it a little more compact, and gone with the vertical elevator I used on the Plinko table, or Splinko table. Uh, but needless to say, that didn't work, so I'm going to have to go down here, go up the outside of this, and then come up, come in through the top. And that is what we're going to do. Uh, I do have to remove a little bit of terrain. Yes, I did have to re-anchor these. Um, Something's missing here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, that's planted. Did I remove a block? Because I got that planted. Uh, okay, and then this was supposed to be planted somewhere. I thought it still was, but apparently it's free. Which it doesn't matter because it's locked. We're not going to be building on top of that anymore. So now I need to get this thing in. Now I do have this thing planted in many different places. So it should be okay to start moving stuff. So what I need to do is we have a five block gap here. I need to take some ceiling tiles like so. Go this way. It doesn't really matter because nobody's going to be seen underneath here. And we need to have room for the hopper pads. So we need one, two, three for the hover pad. So then it's going to start here. And then I'm just going to start working my way down, going down one block at a time. Um, I might build it up two layers, and I probably will. Not that the ball's going to bounce and go over, but the hover pads might push it a little off center, and it might jump over the wall. And that's the only reason why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then once that is done and I have it in the right place, that is, and facing the right way, again, it doesn't matter, but just in case. Just in case somebody happens to uh, mention it. All right, let's uh, bring back the morning. Oh, hit my calculator button. Hang on a second. Let's try that again. All right, I think that's one. Yeah, I don't know how I hit the calculator button. That was uh, a little ways off. But anyways, uh, so the hover pads. Uh, by the way, all the hover pads you see here are going to be on uh, um, da -da -da -da, hover mode. Yes. So this one, now we want them all facing this way. Uh, actually, I only need two blocks there. I forgot. It would be three if I had them this way. But anyway, so I'm going to take this out, and I'm just going to put it two, and then 
it's going to be a hover pad, and then I will put uh, same as I did with the as the the bowling attempted bowling game, and then I'll just do that there. Hang on. No, it's got to be down one more. Uh, you get the idea. I'll figure it out, and I'll bring you back when I have something. And there's the return shoot. Uh, I'm actually wondering if maybe I should have gone three blocks wide on this, because uh, we're using a block that's two block uh, ball that's two blocks wide, and it might actually start getting stuck in here. But hopefully the hover pads will push. Uh, the hover pads should push it enough to make it to the next drop zone. And I have them spaced eight blocks apart. And it goes all the way down to here. I will have to put a wall on this side here just to make sure nothing rolls out. And then from here, then it goes out here. And then it's going to start going up an elevator this way. Now, the way this elevator works... You know what, I think it might actually be just enough room to come up here. And then by the time I get to here, I'll probably be all this height. We do a bit of a quick turn. I might try to have a, a loading area up here so when, when the ball goes down, it'll come up and it'll actually stop in a certain area until I engage our pad to push it out and get it into the play field again. So now we got to get the the side elevator up and I probably will box it in just for the sake of cosmetic purposes. And I'll probably cover it up in a black box and just say it's a it's a dry belt cover. All right, we'll go with that. So now I gotta make some more room for this thing and this since I'm gonna be running it right up against the side of the building uh side of the case I'll call it. Uh it only needs to be four blocks out. So three blocks for the actual elevator and then another block to cover it up and I won't even worry about using the railings that I usually do because it's been a pretty fail safe system I haven't really had any issues with this ball eleva elevator yet even the, even the vertical one did did pretty good alright so it's gonna be the same old thing I've done about a dozen times now so I'm gonna start breaking out the hover pads and then the blocks and I will meet you at the top okay I think that is absolutely everything uh, it wasn't too tricky trying to figure this one out it actually worked out more or less proper I do have to put a little canopy over here just in case this thing pushes it too far but let's just go do a bit of a run through here let's uh, drop down so we are the ball we come out of the chute we land here Hopefully we land here and not over there. That doesn't matter, we avoid one obstacle. Try to go through here. Trying to get stuck on the fences. I'm sure the ball's gonna have a better time than me. Then we just run through. Oh no, we fell through the hole. So then we end up rolling down here to the chute. I'm hoping this is gonna be wide enough so I don't have to widen it anymore. We go through here. Uh, this one comes to here. Again, these are all on hover mode. So it's automatically going to push as soon as it gets power. So when it gets here, this one pushes it into here, which reaches this one, which sends it up the elevator. And then it's going to go all the way up. It doesn't, it'll take a few seconds for it to go, but it'll probably take about 10 minutes to try to get the ball through this course without falling through a hole. Well, that is with falling through a hole, unfortunately. But anyways, it comes up here. Then this, this hover pad here, let me get the edge hover mode again. We'll just gradually push it in. I've got some ramps here to make sure it drops down here. And as soon as it gets here, this one here is going to be the coin controlled by switch. Everything else will be powered except for this one. So when the ball lands here, it stays here and waits until we push the button again. Or I might end up with the controls over on this side now. Now that I'm thinking about it, because originally it was supposed to be on that side. That's where the elevator was supposed to be and all that stuff. But that didn't work out. But that is pretty much it. All I got left to do is uh, get everything hooked up to power and then cover up this and then we'll be ready to go. So uh, give me a few seconds and we will check her out. Okay, I have all the, most of the wiring set up. As you can see the color coding, color coding. I got green, red, yellow, and blue. And I have those 
marked on top of the motors. Uh, glares on that one so you can't actually see it, but that's supposed to be blue. Okay, blue arrow, and it's supposed to be an arrow, it's supposed to be pointing this way. That one's yellow, it's pointing this way. This one's red, pointing this way, and this one's green, pointing that way. And that's to let you know that to have the table turn this way, you turn the yellow one on or off, whichever, however I have set up. Uh, turn the red one for that direction, green to go this way, and so on and so forth. Uh, I've got the the ball staging area set up to orange. At least it should be orange. It kind of looks yellow to me, which it shouldn't be because if they were both yellow, if one was yellow, one was orange, the color would be different. And yes, that is orange. And then I have one more, and what we need to do is we need to be able to have a, well, just call it a kicker, something to get the ball out of the, the winning slot, which is going to be right here. So all I really want to do is just have something coming off the wall, something that's going to be low enough to catch the ball and not interfere with this, and then just going to have a hover pad to kick it back out into here. I'm still worried about that, but at least, at least I don't have anything actually built on this. So if it comes down to where I have to replace this and have the hover pads going three wide instead of two wide, won't be a problem. At least you got room for it. All right, so now to do something really, really hokey and cheap and pray to God it actually looks half decent. So I just want to make it some sort of catch basin to, to catch these. And then, it's, like I said, it's going to have a hover pad to push it out. I do want to have some room for this to come down. So I might actually come down... Let's go to two tiles. Let's go. Let's go three. I mean, I, I'm gonna have some sort of catch, some sort of funnel that they'll drop into. Into, sorry. Uh, let's see, where are we here? We are here. Okay, what do we got? We have. I was actually going to, I was going to try to get this set up on a pressure pad, I might, that involves like suspensions and trying to get a 40 block gap, but I think we'll be, I think we'll be fine with this, if it's, if it's not up there then it's obviously up, it landed in here, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to get some sort of catching mechanism that isn't overly done, that is functional. And I'll bring you back and show you what I got. And there it is, just a simple little funnel hopper. Uh, so what's gonna happen is it leaves enough room for the table to move around. And when the ball, act, if the ball drops in here, it'll should end up in this chute. It'll land here and then we can just eject the ball when we're ready. Uh, like I said, I would have tried to get some sort of wiring set up, but uh, I made a suggestion for short range switchboards, basically like a one block gap, something like the conveyor connector so we can actually use them for like uh, trip switches, pressure switches, stuff like that. Alright, so the only thing left to do is to close all this up and then take it for a test spin after we unlock and unplant everything. So uh, let me finish her up and we'll take it for a test. Okay, she's all wired up, ready to go. Everything seems to be working. I haven't checked the table yet because I want to get a ball on here first. And I think the best place to put it, I guess might as well, well, let's try the loading system first. I'm gonna actually build it up down at the hopper here, or even right here. And then we'll just actually roll it into place. All right, so now I need my blocks. And, or my round blocks, my ball parts. Yes, that can be taken out of context in so many ways. All right, and two, let's make this one a nice gray. And let's see here, do, do, do. Yeah, let's do that and it should roll the way I want. And like a so, let me go. Yeah, I just thought something here, the blueprinting would be perfect for making the balls. Alright, we'll get rid of that, and that, and yes, I have done saves, I have 
probably about 10 saves on this project already. So now we just go ahead and drop that in there. If it actually stayed. It did. Perfect. All right, so now I gotta let's go see if the return mechanism works. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but in it to win it, I guess. You could also tell too. It's getting to that point of the build where I was getting lazy. I just decided to use posts and stack it all up. All right, so this kicks the ball out. It should. Go we'll have a look and see what's going on. Okay, the ball is gone. Good. Did it get stuck? Doesn't look like it. Where is it? Oh dear, I lost my ball again. Eh, it's probably stuck down here somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Hello, is there a ball anywhere? It's probably already up, already up top waiting for me because I didn't realize I don't realize it takes so long to get up there. It's not stuck in there. It's not stuck in here. Well, it's got to be up top because I don't think it's in the elevator. Oh, it is too because I forgot to put the back wall on. All right, uh, let's try this again. Being careful. Not to take out the wrong. Ah, we'll leave it. <laughs> Not taking the chance. All right, uh, back to the post. Ooh, that was a. It's weird. It looks like it's all warpy, and it's just a hitbox that's getting collided with the terrain. So we just put a couple of posts here, and that's it. Trying to snap to the other block that's down there. Good enough. Good enough. All right, so now I gotta build another ball. But at least I know the return mechanism works. That was actually my biggest worry was that I had the channel too small. All right, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna build the ball up here. So uh, let me do a quick cut here. Take two. And yes, it helps if I hit the right, right button to stop recording. All right, I just wanna make sure it doesn't bounce out. Good, let's go over here. And this should bring it right up to here where I hit the orange button to pop free. Uh, I do realize I forgot to unlock everything, but we're not, we'll worry about that after we worry about this. So shoot that ball out. And we should see it end up in there. I probably should have left this side open with railings just so we could see a little bit better. There it is. And I just saw it pop out. We might have to make that ball a different color so we can see it a little bit better, or I could just throw a solar beacon in. So now, that does not push out. Why not? Uh, did it get stuck on the fence? Uh, I think it's on the fence about this one. Uh, let's actually see if that's turning on. Maybe I miswired. Turn you on. Are you actually on? No, you're not. Okay. Troubleshooting. All right, I forgot to hook something up here. Oh, man. I forgot to hook up the hover pad. <laughs> it always helps. You remember your switchboard, but you don't remember your hover pads. All right, so we'll turn that off and then. Do this one. Just want to make sure that it's actually going to load onto the table and then I'm going to unlock everything. Okay, done. Simple as that. So now, give me a ball. Ah, eh, close enough. I was a little worried about that. I was thinking about having the top part of that chute come down a little bit more so it forces it down. I figured it would be too ugly, but at least it works. So now, now I do a save, and now we're at the point of no return. Because now, 
I either break the game, kill myself trying, but fortunately I'm in creative so I can't hurt myself. Or we have a very, very, very successful project. So let's, uh, again, I don't know how that came unplanted. I probably removed the wrong block, had a double click. Oh, this is the one that worries me. Actually, let's do this smart. Let's take that one out. It's so weird not seeing anything move. I want to make sure we get the right block here. There we go. Get all this garbage out of the way. All right, so I don't have any more planty sticks anywhere. No. All right, so now. Now we play tag with the devil. Oh yeah, rotator's over there. Oh, oh, oh. I forgot about that, and that's actually, I noticed this, I think that one block there got snapped to that, yes it did. That's fine, because it was just the one block. Alright, now, we go one, a two, three. Okay, so unlock you. It's gonna be so freaky when this thing starts moving. I'm pretty sure the weight's off balance too. Yes, it is. Look at that, it's pulling that bearing already. Wow. It's a lot of weight. You know what? Maybe we should balance it a little bit. We're gonna throw it on the ceiling tile on here somewhere. Just because and I'm sure it'll break the game in the process, but that's besides the point. And that's why I'm here. Too much weight. Let's put uh, let's put a couple blocks here. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's still a little too much. Where's it going? Stopping and coming back. All right, so this is where the placement of your weights comes in to play. The closer you are to your pivot point, the less of a, an effect the weight will have. So I think if I go like that, that should be close enough anyways. Ooh, I just saw something move. I got a little worried there. All right, let's get that out of the way. Let's actually go check on that block. I want to see if that's actually twisting inside. No, that's actually the rotating plate holding it. Wow. Mind you, it's 170 tons. Really should have uh, weight ratings on these things. Yeah, it's a little, I'm a little nervous to try to unlock stuff underneath here. But the balance seems to be good. I should probably use another block or two on this side. Since it's still going that way a little. And I think that was it. Now, this is where things usually go wrong. Because now we got multiple grids interlocked and interacting. I wonder if I can actually push this up. No, I cannot. That's fine. It is 130 tons, and I'm not He-Man. I'm just a nomad like everybody else. All right. Well, I think that is it. I think that is it. Okay, good. I'm like, wait a minute. It's not moving. Here's that ball. Uh, well, let's see what happens. Let us see, shall we? So this is why I was thinking about having all the hover pads on at the same time. So when I turn this on, it does nothing. Really. Are they even turned on? Yeah, they're turned on. 
it's just a really 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 heavy thing huh interesting and I do have everything locked Wow maybe just for argument's sake let's put a solar beacon down and that was the wrong button thank god I'm in survival uh, double clicking I'll automatically put it in F5 uh, for some reason I don't know why I put it there uh, it's not hover U is hover alright so I'm going to put this over on the edge here I just want to see make sure that we're not outside of 100 meters alright turn navigation on and I highly doubt it. But if I am, that's why it explains why it doesn't move. 48. Okay, so that's obviously not the problem. It's just too heavy. Oh my god, it's moving. Oh, that's why I was going the other way, because I was using green, and green goes this way, or yellow goes this way. Helps you pay attention, doesn't it? All right, let's get that out of my face. I'll turn the red one off. It does move. Got to give it that. It's just extremely heavy. Probably in, um, imbalanced. I really should be having both sides power, but then I don't really have a way to do it unless I have a counterweight and all that stuff. But let's see if we can jump on it, make it go down a little more. Or it's stuck on my ramp. That could be it too. Uh, let's shave a couple of blocks off. Why not? I think that's what it is, it's a weight thing. Because when I stand on it, it goes down, but if I get off, it'll probably start going up again. Let's see what we have here. That's oh, working. Wow, it's so strange seeing something that big just move around like that. Alright. Holy jeez, we're going all over the place here. Where's that ball? Did I lose my ball already? No, it's still there. It's not even moving. Go figure. Okay, I think this might be a balance issue. That ball's going to be pretty heavy, too. Uh, so, a couple of blocks underneath here and see what happens. Hopefully, it doesn't crush me. I'm wondering if maybe if I had these a little more centered, if it would help a little bit. Right, where's that center? Close enough. Let's get out of that pinch point. And then I gotta check these ones. I don't think I have... I don't think I have the blue on. No, I don't. So there is definitely a heavier side over here. Let's see what's going on with that COM. Actually doing really good, surprisingly. Yeah, you can see it's definitely over this way a little bit. Oh, that's that's the outer ring. Yeah, there's a slight imbalance. Well, let me uh, let me try a few things here, and I'll bring you back if I come up with any better results. All right. Well, I am sort of getting something. It seems like having both of them on might actually work a little bit better. Uh, look at the arrows properly also helps too so let's uh, see if we can get go the other way it's just really slow because it is really heavy there you go it's moving just really really slow all right so it's going that way so I'll turn the blue on or turn the red off let's stop that see if I can get that end to lift up so much weight it's just unbelievable
And that ball's not even rolling anywhere. Go figure. Uh, they're slime balls or Velcro. Oh, and right in the hole. All right, let's try this again. Now, unfortunately, I gotta bring that side down, so I gotta tilt the table, eventually. I think it touched something again. Oh, yeah, I should have doubled up the hover pads. I did not expect it to be this goddamn heavy. But it does move eventually. You get some weight on it and it starts to, to budge. Am I using the right one again? Yes, I am. Yellow is on. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking we might have to revisit this one because I can see that ball stuck too. Oh, let's go up and jump on it really, really, really hard. Wish you could hold shift down and just jet back straight down. And... Oh, right on the fence. And now it's not moving. Are you stuck somewhere? Clipping on one of these blocks, perhaps? Probably not. Uh, it's probably something else. Could be it's the fact that it's actually touching here. And clipping into that. That's what's going on. Well, I think we're going to have to call this one here. I might have to... I do have uh, quite a few backup saves. I actually have to save before we even unlocked it. So we could probably do some tweaking uh, in a future episode. But there we have it. An attempt at a tabletop labyrinth on a grand scale. Needs more power. We need to get Tim Allen in here doing his grunt. But anyway, so that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. And I'll see you in the next one. Later. Mm -hmm.